welcome back co-founder and co-CEO, Scott Farquhar. How good was that? It's not often you uh, hear a flute playing in, that, in a band, so that was very impressive. Well done again, that was incredible. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Agile and DevOps keynote. Uh, we're here today to talk about why you should be in uh, why you should be in an why you should be in an open software relationship. Before we get to that, let's rewind a minute and look at why software is so important in today's world. Now, every business today, as you know, is born digital, or they're transforming to become a digital organization. And the heartbeat of this transformation is the software team. And like the heart that brings blood to every cell in the body, software development teams need to touch every corner of your organization. Now, with software teams at the center of this transformation, it's useful to reflect that software teams are no longer just a few developers writing code in a basement. They're complex, multidisciplinary teams who also have to work with vast arrays of uh, people across their organizations. Designers don't just work with software teams. They are the software team. Marketers don't just receive the product and spread the word. They are the software team. Product managers don't just come up with ideas and hand them over the design. They are the software team. And it's the same with tech writers, QA, support, and management. All of these roles are needed to ship high quality products, not just software developers. It's a big group of people who need to be in lockstep and they use lots of different tools to perform at their best. And so that's why any one vendor who tries to get you to commit to a one true love relationship with them is simply wrong. No one software vendor can solve for all the tools that your teams need, and anyone who says otherwise is misguided. So we at Atlassian understand this, recognizing that software teams need to connect and work with an increasing array of tools we created the open DevOps movement. And that's evolved beyond just DevOps into an open tool chain. Atlassian is the backbone that connects all of your work that happens in so many different tools. And today, we're introducing some new products and improved integrations to help you stay aligned and autonomous like never before. Because every relationship needs a continuous improvement mindset, right? So to share more about our vision for an open tool chain, Please welcome Justine to the stage. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Scott. That was great. I'm Justine. You guys excited to be here? Awesome. I like the energy. Um, as Scott mentioned, it's time to open up your software dating life. So I'm curious to see how many tools you think your software teams uses. So I'm going to start with a poll. Can you help me out with the poll and raise your hand if you think that they use less than five tools? All right, not many hands. How about between five and 10? Still not many hands. OK, more than 20? All right, there we go. Awesome, I see a lot more hands. Thanks for that. Many of you might have forgotten or may simply just not know, so I want to jog your memory on how many tools software teams use. Here's a snapshot of all of those tools. The average software team actually uses 25 tools to support collaboration. That's a lot of tools. And an automatic response to this is, ugh, can I just buy these all from one company? Consolidation is often sold as a magic fix to this problem. But does a magic fix force you to sacrifice the best tool for the job? You want to keep your talent during the great resignation. And you especially want to keep your development talent. And that means pleasing your developers. So what makes your developers happy? Developers want to use the tool they want to use. They want to choose the best tool for the job. So let them. Now I want to focus on the expectations of developers in 2022 for a minute. 
they're being told, we don't want our apps to go down. Okay, so now devs need an on-call tool like PagerDuty. And then another day they might be told, make sure your applications look pretty. Okay, so now they're working with designers and another tool like Miro or Figma. And then another day they're being told, make sure your code is secure. And then they're implementing another tool like Sneak for DevSecOps. They're ensuring that security scanning is happening on their code. And then another day they may hear, hey, guess what? We're actually ISO certified, so now we need a fully audited tool chain. And then boom, in comes another tool. Software developers don't want 25 tools, but they have 25 tools because they're doing way more today than they were 15 years ago. And they need all of these tools to effectively collaborate. There are more and more jobs for software developers today. So where do you go to track all the work that developers are doing beyond coding? I've looked. The answer is nowhere. It's simply fragmented across tools, which is causing an explosion of development sprawl. That's really painful for your developers. And it's truly not ideal to have unhappy developers during the great resignation. So let's recap. We're seeing the shape of software teams is changing. And because of this, software teams are using a lot more tools. And this sprawl of tools is actually making it hard to keep track of work. So today, we'd like to show you how Atlassian is addressing these problems. We are bringing in third parties and Atlassian tools together in one place, so you can track your value streams across the discovery, delivery, and operations phase of the software development lifecycle. And now I'm going to toss it over to Tiffany To, who heads up product for our Agile and DevOps solutions. <laughs> Thanks, Justine. So the picture that Justine just painted sounds really chaotic, right? This huge sprawl of tools, and then we're asking developers to do even more. How does anyone collaborate in this environment? But every once in a while, when you've got a situation like this that's really challenging, it creates an opportunity for a product to come along and completely change the game. Let's take a little detour. Let's time machine back to 2002 and think about how did we build software then? I will date myself and share that I was just graduating with my CS degree. I had just completed an extreme programming class and stumbled my way through pair programming. XP was one of many Agile methodologies that were coming up at the time, like Kanban and Scrum. And these concepts for shorter dev cycles, peer code reviews, and more frequent testing were the fundamentals for Agile software development, enabling dev teams to respond much faster to customers changing requirements. Wonderful, right? Well, we didn't really have any tools yet, right? There was nothing built for Agile development teams. We relied on waterfall tools, like spreadsheets and Microsoft Project. I can still vividly remember the giant six-month-long Microsoft Project Gantt charts that my poor program manager had to update every time we made a change. Unbeknownst to him at the time, also in 2002, Mike Cannon-Brooks and Scott Farquhar financed $10,000 on a credit card started Atlassian and launched JIRA. And JIRA completely changed the game for how teams would collaborate to ship software. We finally had the right tool for agile software development. But when you zoom in on developers and how they were coding, 
there was another evolution that was happening at the time. When it came to source code management, we'd moved from single file to centralized multi-file version controls. But as dev teams, individual developers still had to merge all their current revisions before they could commit. But then, with distributed version control systems like Git and Mercurial, developers could finally commit, branch, merge locally. And this revolutionized how those teams could divide and progress work quickly and collaboratively on big, complex software projects. But as is the natural evolution of tech, another disruption came along. Before coming to Atlassian, I spent nearly two decades working on technologies like virtualization and distributed infrastructure, powering this huge shift to cloud that we're all on. So I saw firsthand this corresponding shift in application architectures from monolith to microservices to take full advantage of the scale, cost, and resiliency of the cloud, all those benefits that we want. But with this shift, in the application architecture comes a new set of challenges. That code collaboration challenge that distributed VCS was able to solve, it's just moved. It's moved up the stack into how those software components come together. Because modern software is no longer written. It's assembled. Netflix shared their first decomposition project resulted in 700 microservices. Uber shared it was 500 for them. At Atlassian, we manage over 1,500 microservices for our cloud product portfolio. How do you track application architectures at this scale? And how do teams collaborate on the ownership, the dependencies, and the health of all those components? Well, today, we're going to be announcing three things to power the next wave in developer collaboration for the cloud era. The first is a component catalog. To tame that sprawl that I was talking about, the catalog is a map to assemble your distributed software from all these components, along with information about all the teams that collaborate on those components. The second is a DevOps health tool to ensure the resiliency, scale, performance, and security of those services. Scorecards help you measure and evaluate component health continuously, so teams can take action at the earliest symptoms of an issue. And then the third is an extensibility engine. To give your teams maximum flexibility for all the ways that they work and the full tool set that they need to use, this engine is powered by Forge, our app development platform. So you can create a fully customized developer workflow experience for your teams. So three things, a component catalog, a DevOps health tool, and an extensibility engine. But these aren't three separate things. They're the foundation of one of our newest products from the point A framework, Compass. Compass is mission control for your distributed software architecture. Developer collaboration is reinvented again to ensure your journey to cloud is successful. Let's take a closer look. Inspired by the dev portal that we had to build ourselves at Atlassian, at its heart, Compass is a hub for your dev teams to collaborate on the assembly of their software from hundreds of services, open source libraries, a place for them to easily find docs or owners of those components and see the ongoing health of everything that those teams own. And as you scale your engineering organization and these components become widely distributed across teams, nobody can track this in their head. And you definitely don't want to track it in a spreadsheet. So with this component catalog, You've got everything tracked in one place, a single source of truth, so you don't have to. Compass is designed to simplify and contextualize workflows, bringing together 
key information, that huge open DevOps ecosystem of tools into an activity feed on a per component basis. It shows you dependency maps between those components so you can architect new services much more easily or help triage outages because it's connected to your IT service management tool, including Jira service management. Compass is laser focused on making the life of a dev team in the cloud era much easier. It also deeply integrates with Jira software. So you can see the relevant engineering work items right alongside the components in the catalog. So when your teams come together to plan the next sprint, they've got a full picture so they can strike the right balance between new feature development and tech debt. With this massive shift to cloud, your infrastructure starts to look a lot like software, or infra as code, which means the dev teams that write that code need to also understand deeply the provisioning and the operations. Because in this infra as code world, you build it, you run it, means all the responsibility for the running of that code stays with the team that built it. So operations is now a shared sport between the dev, the IT team, the platform team. But we just said managing a distributed architecture is so much harder. And these teams now have to manage the dev and the ops. How do they scale? Well, there's lots of great best practices for DevOps out there. But teams learn them through really painful trial and error. So our goal with Compass is to also accelerate that learning curve. And so to do that, Compass's health tool provides scorecards to codify these best practices. For example, you see here a production readiness scorecard with the PR cycle time, unit test coverage, maybe security compliance. Once deployed, you can use a service health scorecard. So when metrics fall below that threshold, teams get an alert. And once defined, these scorecards can be applied to any component or set of components and be fully customized by your teams. Our open tool chain approach crowdsources this best of breed but disparate set of tools across code, observability, security, even docs, and brings it all into a single pane of glass. So your teams have a holistic view of all their components and their health. For example, let's say you're tracking a new microservice in Compass. And security is really important to your organization. And now, with 90% of applications using open source, open source software supply chain health is really important. So you could use our partner Tidelift's integration. With the dependency health scorecard, this integration cross-checks the components repo manifest against Tidelift's certified good packages list. So you can quickly see if there are any unapproved packages. Teams can then continuously improve the health of their software supply chain, not just when they're ready to ship. Add the GitHub integration, and you've got the Dora metrics automatically shown for each service. Add new Relic, you've got API latency. Add Sneak, and you've got the status of open vulnerabilities. Automated scorecards are the missing link in your DevOps tool chain. They provide the foundation for you to scale from 100 to thousands of microservices. Insights into problems become second nature because your teams are working on the continuous care and feeding of these components. What's even more powerful is that these scorecards underpin a weekly 30-minute check-ops ritual. So you can take metrics from this chaos of tools and translate them into actionable ways for your teams to improve. Think of it as an automated 100-point car inspection with clear actions to drop into a Jira backlog, the next sprint, or an on-call rotation. Maintain that car and it won't die on you.
The same goes for your microservices. Without looking, quick test. What are the three things? Component catalog, second one. DevOps health tool, anyone remember the third? Extensibility engine, thank you. Every organization works differently. And you've shown us through decades with Jira that extensibility is fundamental to all the ways that your team collaborates. So with Compass's extensibility engine, we're enabling you to customize the UI with extension points in the main navigation, the team dashboard, and even the top nav. We want to empower you to build new capabilities using Forge and make this your developer experience portal. Fork, extend, customize, evolve into that DevOps culture over time. Atlassian's own portal is called Microscope. What will yours be called? But powering the dev team's ability to collaborate isn't enough, because there's another set of people that are involved before you start the building. Your complete software development life cycle requires a diverse set of teams that own and define work from ideating and discovery through to delivery and then operations. And this runs in small and big loops continuously as teams iterate on learning what's delivering value and what isn't. So buckle up, because Justine and I are going to take you on a ride through this loop to understand how the open tool chain powers the workflows that drive it. And our first stop is discovery, that critical phase when you're deciding on the why and the what before you commit to the work. Now, work in this phase might include customer research, envisioning with your designers, prototyping with an architect, you're bringing the team together on the same vision. And this type of work happens in many places, live brainstorming, Figma, Confluence pages, live and virtual whiteboards. And when your company sets its goals for the year, it's often the product manager's responsibility to pick from all these ideas, to map to those goals, and then communicate to stakeholders and the team so they know what to build. No big deal, right? Well, in reality, this can be difficult and chaotic, especially if you have opinionated stakeholders. <clears throat> For those of you who are product managers, we know balancing decisions and the impact to customers and the business is hard. You're responsible for the most valuable assets, the team, and keeping them motivated and moving forward. As a product manager myself, I know you're hit with input from a lot of directions. You've got sales and marketing, you've got data and analytics, and then obviously direct customer feedback. And through a process of art and science, you build a product strategy and a roadmap. You communicate it to customers in the market and you explain it to your team so they know what to build. And through all that, Jira Software is the home for the software development teams tracking the work. Yet product managers use other tools around Jira Software to define what goes into it. Well, that changes today because I'm proud to announce another point A program innovation, Jira Product Discovery the only product discovery solution built on Jira, offering product managers a single place to bring customer needs into focus, set product priorities as a team, and seamlessly move from ideation to customer delivery all in Jira. Jira product discovery, it captures the why behind the work. Let's see how. Product managers can sort and prioritize all the ideas using a range of fields to factor in evolving business, customer, and delivery status information. They can tie those ideas to goals, themes, or even specific teams. Using voting fields, they can get input from internal teams. 
and then seamlessly integrate data from third-party tools so they can prioritize impact from customer-facing teams. For example, measures of revenue opportunity from Salesforce or support impact from Zendesk. Bringing all this data together, visualizing those ideas in a list, board, or matrix view is so important because it allows those teams to cut and sort the data to make the crucial calls on what they believe are the best ways to deliver value to customers. But discovery, it doesn't happen in a silo. So again, the reason why we believe you should be in an open software relationship. By building your software development lifecycle around Jira and Compass in this open tool chain approach, you're enabling all your teams to work from their choice in tools, but with the shared context to make better decisions faster. And that's why Jira product discovery and other discovery tools are integrated directly into Jira software. So with a single click, you can connect those ideas to an epic, and that vision starts to become reality faster. Because once you're in Jira software, as your planning hub, you've got easy access to views of how development and operations are going via tabs. And these tabs include integrations to other Atlassian products and our open tool chain of partners. So teams can preview and interact with content and insight from all these other tools, giving them context right then and there to move work forward without switching tools. To see this tool chain workflow in action, we start at the top with a goal and aligning our teams around this goal of growing monthly recurring revenue. From the Jira product discovery integration, we see an idea for an in-app promotion of a new credit card, but it's evaluated with the context of the idea's strategic impact and other factors. And what's really important is that this context thread continues as the work is planned and executed. So teams never lose sight of why they're doing something. Meanwhile, back in Jira product discovery, product managers can track an idea's progress via that connected epic. So they can quickly communicate to stakeholders on the status without even having to go into Jira software. So now that you know the why and the what to build, the next stage of bringing ideas to life are the designs. So I'm excited to announce an upcoming edition of a new tab for designs in Jira software. Just like when we brought developer workflows closer to Jira software with the code in Jira tab, coming soon, we're going to add a design tab to bring key design work right alongside related issues and projects to integrate a design ops learning loop into where the whole team is collaborating. Integrations from Figma, Adobe, Envision, and others help teams show and not just tell. Designers can involve developers early in the design process with live designs in Jira. So as they're iterating a design ops loop, it can ensure usability and customer value as a team. I hope you can see why I'm so excited that our open toolchain story has grown so much from the Open DevOps Foundation that we announced last year. And your teams now have three exciting new things to look forward to. The first is Compass as the new collaboration hub for your dev teams. The second is Jira product discovery as the new home for ideation. And last but not least is an upcoming design tab in Jira software. All of these combine to the same goal, connecting more of your teams together to get better at this complex mission of becoming an agile software company. And with all these investments to bring in the color of the discovery phase, imagine how teams can make better decisions with the context of the why and greater fidelity on the designs to bring that vision to life. Now, 
Back over to you, Justine, to take us into the delivery part of this loop. <laughs> uh, you actually have no idea how long we practiced on that Top Gun <laughs> high five act, but it worked. Uh, so Tiff just walked you through the discovery phase where ideas happen. And once these ideas move to committed plans, they become issues in Jira software where we move over to the delivery phase the next stop on this ride. And when these issues move into Jira software, that's where software teams start building and committing code. They bring repositories, builds, security, feature flags, pull requests, you name it, into Jira software. And when all that development activity goes into Jira, the rest of the team automatically gets updated on a real-time status of the development work. And everyone can operate as one product team and be on the same page. So I'm curious, does anyone remember the poll that we took earlier on the number of tools that software teams use these days? I did not tell you there would be a test, so it's totally OK if you don't. All right, I'm hearing 25 for those on uh, the video, which is correct. When you hear that number, it's really easy to think, can't we just consolidate all these tools, just buy a Swiss Army knife with everything that you need out of the box? It's so much easier, right? I want to tell you a short story, partly because we're half, more than halfway through this presentation, and I want to wake you up. And partly because I think it'll really help you visualize why consolidating tools isn't always easier. A few weeks ago, my four-year-old wanted to have a play date. And a few days before that play date, he asked if we could build a fort. Typical four-year-old stuff. My friend suggested that we buy one from Amazon. You know, the ones that kind of look like this. They're easy to put up. They come with all the pieces. So I'm a pretty epic fort builder, actually. So I was like, nah, I got this. So when the day came for the play date, I got out every blanket and chair in the house, and I went to work. You didn't think I'd tell you about this fort without actually showing it to you, did you? So as I start to build this fort, I needed more and more things. So before you knew it, I had blankets and chairs were strung together with hair ties and scarves hair clips, a lamp, even soccer socks. My son's friend actually left saying that I was the coolest mom ever, and this was the coolest Ford ever. Their words, not mine, I swear. <laughs> so I could have bought all of that from Amazon. It would have come in the box with all the pieces. But come on, did you see that thing? It was so small. I didn't get to become the cool mom because I bought everything out of the box. I chose the best tools for the job when I needed to. When building software, you can choose the all-in-one option, which may be just OK. But it feels like a sacrifice, doesn't it? Wouldn't you rather be able to choose the best tools for the job for a truly epic outcome? Last year, we announced Open DevOps, which is a DevOps project that combines Atlassian products with our partners. And when you choose Open DevOps, it gives your team the ability to, tools they, to choose the tools that they naturally work in and the tools that they naturally want to be in. And then the tight integrations with Jira will ensure that everyone else on the team gets updated with a real-time status of work. And the best part of this is that we, as Atlassian, will take care of the complexity of integrating the tools for you. So suddenly, managing 25 tools doesn't seem as complex with Open DevOps, does it? All these tools can be automated and actioned on right from within Jira. 
And I'm not gonna lie, we are pumped about your response to Open DevOps. You worked on hundreds of thousands of DevOps projects. You connected millions of repositories. And you deployed tens of millions of times. You also told us that Open DevOps improved your developer productivity by 20%, simply by letting developers automate all of those little manual, tedious tasks that nobody wants to deal with, especially developers. And then also had less tangible effects, like boosting morale for your development team. And you also told us that you expected to spend $27 million less over a three-year span by betting on Atlassian and betting on our open tool chain. That's truly incredible. Thank you for trusting us. But we're just getting started. You've told us that there's still many more integrations that you need. And tracking them is still straight up hard, but it doesn't have to be. Think about it. In order to figure out how many tools your software team has, I just had to pull this room with hands. When are we ever in a room together these days in order to take manual polls with hand raises? We're not very often. So how do you do this internally? How do you know how many tools your projects have? How do you know what those tools are? In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing a new tool chain screen in our products. That's what it'll look like in Jira software. It'll help you understand what tools you already have. It'll help you discover new integrations. It'll help you connect them. And even better, it'll help you visualize what tools you do not have. Where are your gaps? So I want to highlight two examples of the breadth of options that will be available to you. The next time your team kicks off a project, just head on over the tool chain screen to see what tools you already have connected. Here you can see that there's a gap in testing, which is a huge red flag if you want to deliver quality software to production. So once you click into the test management tab, you can see a variety of test management apps to choose from. So you can see Mabel or X-Ray. And all you got to do is click on that and add that app to your project. And boom, that tool chain gap just got filled. And you unlock the ability to run end-to-end -end testing with confidence on your projects. And then at any point in the project, you can revisit this tool chain screen to see if there's any more gaps that you might need to fill. So for example, if you haven't connected a chat app, you can add a communication tool like Slack or Microsoft Teams. And then once you connect that, once Jira is integrated with Slack, your teams get continuous feedback loops throughout the project. You can accelerate those critical conversations in context to support the rapid, ever-changing nature of DevOps pipelines. Pretty cool, right? And with this tool chain screen and Atlassian products, you'll have the greater visibility and greater control over your tool chain in product at the project level. And it'll be given to you in a view that uncovers gaps in your tool chain that can be filled with the tools that you want to use. We deeply care about our customers having the best integrations possible and using the best tool for the job. And we want to give them to you in the context that you need in product when you're making decisions. So with all the tools that your teams need plugged into Atlassian, we're in a unique position. We get all of that data that's flowing through our tools around the code. And with this data, we can connect the work to the people in the org. So I want to walk you through how we're doing this to improve team level performance. 
You told us that you need relevant metrics at the very moment that you're making decisions. And you're making decisions when you're in our products. So we've heard you. So with this data, we're actually gonna bring in those insights into our products to where you're doing your work. This will give you better access to that data that's flowing through our tools at the right time, right when you need it. So you can see here that the Sprint Commitment Insight will show up to help teams plan the right amount of work and predictably deliver on commitments. And then right below it is the issue type breakdown insight. This will help teams prioritize work, their work in line with the overall objectives of the project. And here, you can see how the current sprint is actually pacing towards the goal. And right below it, you can see the sprint burn down insight, which shows the amount of work remaining and the likelihood that you might achieve that sprint goal. There's actually a term that when you're cooking pasta, you can take the spaghetti out, throw it at the wall, and see if it sticks. If it sticks, it's done. But really, it's like how many times you have to throw it at the wall to see if it sticks. So with this, there's no more need to throw spaghetti at the wall. Put the finger in the air. Take a guess on calculations, because you have it right where you need it. And if you're still not sold, I'm going to try again. Deployment frequency is what software teams use in order to see if they're high performing or not. Because high performing teams deploy thousands of times a day if you're a company like Amazon. And you can track your deployments in context, and you can do it across any continuous integration or continuous delivery tool, whether that's Atlassian's or not, as long as it's tied to that JIRA issue. And because each piece of work from Atlassian and third-party tools is tied to that JIRA issue, we can provide the most granular view in the market of cycle time. And we can do it right here in product. These native insights are absolutely invaluable for teams. To be able to access things like sprint progress or cycle time right into the context of the, where they work, it actually gives these individual teams the ability to learn and improve their process. But what if a leader needs more than that? What if they need to know what projects are consuming the most time or where the biggest bottlenecks are in the pipeline? And they need to do this across all teams and all projects in an organization. That requires a different ability. You need to be able to aggregate all of that data, and then you need to be able to run complex analysis across teams and across projects. And you've heard this already today if you've been tuning in to more of the keynotes. They covered it in the uh, opening keynote, but this is where Atlassian Analytics comes in. And it will be generally available as an early access program in our enterprise edition of JIRA software coming very soon. So we've covered that you can improve performance by using the data in our tools. But another way you can do this is by using the data to trigger actions with automation. So I'm going to walk you through a very common scenario that if you're on a software team, you do every single day. And that's shipping a project. In this instance, it's going to be moving a project from beta to general availability. When the work starts, the JIRA issue will automatically transition to in progress, which will automatically create a feature flag in a tool like LaunchDarkly, which then at the very same time will automatically create a branch in GitHub. And then once that JIRA ticket moves from in progress over to done, which feels so good, automation will automatically clean up that feature flag and at the same time, it will create a release notes page in Confluence, and it will tag the people who worked on the project, whether that's support or marketing, or product, engineering. And in the coming weeks, the automation engine 
We'll also invite folks who worked on that project to a retro, which all of us in this room who are doing our duty with good agile practices are doing, right? And on the, on the Zoom. <laughs> so one week from today, this will show up on your Google Calendar with a Zoom link attached. That's not all. Automation will then connect to your Sonos. It'll turn on return of the Mac and will make you immediately stand up and dance. No, it doesn't do that, but I just embarrassed myself in front of all of you. <laughs> and you'll feel so good that you'll want to. All right, so we've just walked you through how we can help make an open software relationship work in the delivery phase. When you choose to put Atlassian at the center of how you deliver software, you get to choose the tools you want and we will take care of automating and integrating the rest. Now I'm gonna move over to our last stop on this ride and cover what we're doing to support the convergence of you build it, you run it, development, and IT ops teams. Once you push code into production, you transition into the operations phase of the deployment. In this phase, you need the ability to monitor rollback changes if an incident occurs. This helps give your teams time to triage, figure out who to contact about the incident, and proactively flag risks in the future. And when dev and ops aren't collaborating well in this phase, developers will engineer a solution, and they'll just hand it on over to ops. This approach causes a lot of downtime and a lot of incidents. So let's relate this to the most global language out there, soccer. This would be like if the goalie was only concerned with blocking the ball from the goal and then kicking it upfield, not even worrying about whether it went to offense, because hey, it's the offense's job to get the ball, right? That would result in a lot of failed passes and turnovers. That's not how you win the World Cup with soccer. In DevOps, if an incident occurs, IT ops needs to know what the root cause of the incident is in order to fix it. And when runbooks are out of date, they waste precious time with their hair on fire trying to figure out who to contact in engineering to solve it. What if they didn't have to do that? What if they had the information they need to diagnose the issue right at their fingertips. When soccer is done right, the goalie, offense, and defense are on the same page, and they score goals. They win. When DevOps is done right, developers adopt a you build it, you run it mindset. And this forces them to think how the software is going to run in production as they design it. And our vision is to support the convergence of these development and IT ops teams. Because they can only build and run digital, great digital products and services if they do it together. So let's Bob Ross this and paint a picture of harmonious DevOps. During an outage, our vision is for Compass's component catalog to service the information from your CI CD tool into your ops tool, like Jira Service Management. With this, IT ops can easily find out who owns and supports that engineering component. And they can cut out that last minute hair on fire scramble to try to figure out who to contact during an outage. And with a full and accurate picture of all things service related, they can get to the right development teams quicker. So together, they can paint happy little trees and make smarter, safer changes and respond to incidents faster. You get it? Happy little trees, Bob Ross. It's a good thing I don't do stand up. <laughs> Innovations like Compass coupled with Jira service management give IT operations teams that richer, real-time information about all the engineering components that
that your critical business applications and services depend on. And just like that, we've completed the most complete view in the market of the entire software development lifecycle. That is what a truly open tool chain looks like. And then the last thing I'm gonna cover today, stay with me everybody. How do your executives get aligned with all that work that we just went through that your teams are doing? The simple answer is Jira Line. It's even in the name. CIOs behind our largest installations need to answer, are we investing in the right things to compete effectively and win market share? Is our strategy working? Did I place the right bets? Are my teams working on the right thing? This is the objective tree in Jira Line. It's where busy executives will head to get an update on how their organization's goals are progressing from the portfolio level all the way down to the team level. At-risk and off-track objectives can be addressed in a way that no other solution in the market can provide. That's it, everyone. The bottom line is, we just showed you how Atlassian is the only one making an open tool chain truly work. And this is across the discovery, delivery, and operations phase of the software development lifecycle. And software teams are just where the seed gets planted. We covered earlier that more and more orgs are adopting Atlassian and agile practices that span out to ITSM and then to the rest of the organization to manage their work. So on behalf of myself, Scott, and Tiffany, I wanted to thank you all for joining us today in Vegas if you're here, joining us from home in your sweatpants if you're at home. And also just do a little plug that if you want to ask more questions about this, you can come into Bellini 2101, the room, not the drink, uh, to, to discuss removing uh, friction from your DevOps tool chain, and we'll be there tomorrow at 11.15. So thank you, everybody, for coming.